Huh. Is that my boss's phone? That fool. Why are there so many pictures of women in the bathroom? Aside from being a completely terrible boss, he's also a creep? 30 minutes earlier, I was being scolded by my boss even though I did exactly what he told me. Just because our clients aren't happy, he puts all the blame on me. But if everything goes all well and perfect, he takes all the credit and brags about it to the CEO. I took a deep breath and told myself to just embrace it. But that didn't last long. I was going to lose it. I quickly made my way to the bathroom holding in all my emotions and sat down on the toilet in anger. I thought to myself, enough is enough. I cannot take it anymore. Just at that very moment before I was about to cry, I found a mysterious cell phone sitting just below the bathroom stall. This is definitely my boss's mobile phone. I know I'm not wrong, but how did it come to be in the female restroom? I'm betting his password is something ridiculous, like 69, 69, 69. He is such a filthy pig. Surely this password suits his level of intelligence. Ha! I was right! It actually worked! Once I unlocked it, I was shocked to find so much secret footage of women, many of which I knew because they were all my colleagues. Wow, they were all filmed in such a creepy angle. I had to tell the CEO. I won't let anyone like this endanger our office anymore. I hastily took the evidence of the CEO so that I could expose my boss for the creep that he truly is. But guess what happened? The executives told me to hush about the incident. They told me to not show a single soul and to just let it go as it would tarnish the reputation of the organization. To my disbelief, my executive took Don's phone away from me and ordered me to pretend that I never saw anything and to never repeat it to anyone in the office. I left his office feeling furious, so I stomped over to my colleagues, also known as the Angel Gang, so I could fill them in on what happened. But they didn't believe me. That was until, hey, I need an update on your project in my room this afternoon, my boss Don said. <laughs> Perfect. Now I knew this would be the perfect opportunity to enter his office and find some stone-cold evidence to prove it to the Angel King. Immediately, I found a folder full of dirty pictures in there. But not only pictures, videos. I quickly imported all the pictures on my phone so I could show the Angel Gang before deleting it from his device. And as soon as the Angel Gang saw those pictures, they were furious. They lost all faith in the company and were appalled by the fact that the CEO told me to keep sexual harassment quiet. I went with the Angel Gang to talk about Don with our CEO, but it did more harm than good. They were pigs. They shut the claim down and said that there was nothing they could do about it because at the end of the day, they wanted to save their own butts. The Angel Gang lost all hope and kept their head in work. They were miserable and hope that one day the executives would see their value through their sales and maybe get a promotion after 10 wasteful years. Watching everyone look so unhappy made my blood boil. I couldn't take it anymore and I snapped. I used to think showing my love and passion for work would be enough for the organization, that they'd value me someday as long as I dedicated my life to it. To work overtime for free and never complain but now that everything is clear, I no longer trust this company. But I couldn't quit just yet. I still needed to feed myself after all. So I took a bunch of freelance jobs and started working overtime. I may have neglected my quality of work so I could fit in two jobs, but I was happy to be doing some of it for myself. After having quit a bit of money, I resigned to work as a full-time freelancer and believe it or not, new and old customers followed me after my resignation. Of course, it was much more tiring than before since now I had double the work. But if this many people wanted to use my service, I knew I could make it big because all these clients were mine. Plus, I finally worked for myself. 
I was able to build a positive identity and create the best relationships with my customers, who liked me for my work and was finally happier than ever. I began having too many customers and eventually couldn't handle them all, so I passed them on to the Angel Gang because I trusted their skills and I knew I had planned to secretly start a company with them soon. They were my forever friends after all. When I would have meetings, I would use a cafe since it was so much cheaper than renting an office and it really worked out for the better. I'd pass off all sorts of clients to my colleagues and they even took in the ones that I didn't prefer working with. That's what's great about working in a team. They were able to fit their work style with other customers that really kicked the business off. Five years have now passed and our company is super successful. We're continuing to grow each and every day and the Angel Gang are finally employed and happier than ever. I let them do what they like, with who they like, and they can choose when they want to work. We are so big now that I'm even going to need an assistant in my team. So I was so excited to meet my brand new assistant. I heard the sound of knocking on my door before I told him to come in. And to my sweet surprise, I saw the look of someone who had just seen a ghost. Hello, Boss Don. Uh, I mean, Assistant Don. Welcome to the Angel Company. Let's have some fun, shall we? This story was inspired by the lessons in the book, Be a Free Range Human, by Marianne Cantwell. It encourages you not to settle for a boring job that often doesn't even give you a real job security. Instead, you should find your passion and excel at doing what you love doing the most.